Case presentation. This patient has meiosis, partial ptosis and anophthalmus on the right. Pupillary light and accommodation reflexes are intact. Eye movements are normal. The ptosis can be overcome by voluntary upgoing. There is also ipsilateral anhydrosis over the face, whilst the arm and the upper trunk are spared. There is no evidence of heterochromia of the irides. There is a scar over the right side of the neck. The diagnosis is a right horner's syndrome. The pattern of anhydrosis suggests a peripheral lesion proximal to the superior cervical ganglion, involving preganglionic sympathetic fibers. The presence of a scar on the neck suggests this may be complication of neck surgery. Clinical Notes Homer's syndrome is characterized by meiosis, partial ptosis and ophthalmus and anhydrosis. Meiosis results from impairment of the sympathetic pupillotilator fibers. The light and accommodation reflexes are intact in Homer's syndrome. However, as the sympathetic pupillotilator fibers are impaired, the pupil will not dilate in response to dark, dim light, or far vision. Look carefully at the patient's eyes in the neutral position especially noting the palpebral fissure in each eye, the distance between the upper and lower eyelids. The upper eyelid usually covers the upper edge of the iris but no part of the pupil. Ptosis is where all or part of the pupil is covered by the eyelid. Note if the ptosis is unilateral or bilateral. Complete ptosis does not occur in Homer's syndrome as the upper eyelid is controlled by the levator palpebri superioris third nerve and the Muller muscle, sympathetic fibers. The Muller muscles are affected in both the upper, causing partial ptosis, and lower eyelid, causing slight elevation of the lower eyelid. This results in narrowing of the palpebral fissure. True anophthalmus does not occur, and the ptosis with narrowing of the palpebral fissures gives an impression of anophthalmus. It is best to describe this as apparent anophthalmus. A feature of partial ptosis in Horner's syndrome is that it can be overcome by voluntary upgaze. The presence of anhydrosis is variable and depends on the site of the lesion. The pattern of anhydrosis has useful localizing value. The anhydrosis results in dry skin, and this can be assessed crudely by gently stroking the skin with the side of a pen, and comparing with the other side. Anhydrosis will cause the pen to glide over the surface of the skin more freely. It should be more formally assessed using sweating tests. It is important to particularly check for anhydrosis over each of the three areas, face, arm, and upper trunk. This will determine the patterns of anhydrosis in localizing the site of the lesion. Horner's syndrome results from interruption of the sympathetic pathway that starts at the hypothalamus and ends at the Muller muscles pupil and sweat glands. This comprises of three neurons. Lesions can be classified as central or peripheral. Central lesion, affect first order neurons. Peripheral lesions, affect second or third order neurons. An understanding of the anatomy of the sympathetic pathway will help localize lesions according to the pattern of anhydrosis. Look for heterochromia of irides. A feature of congenital Horner's syndrome iris pigmentation is under sympathetic control during development, which is complete by two years. Heterochromia does not occur in Horner's syndrome acquired later in life.